There is a process going on at the moment whereby all of the commitments for the Assembly in relation to new decade, new approach are being worked through. But I think the important thing is to say that that was a new decade, new approach is uh, an agreement developed by the UK and Irish governments for the endorsement of the, the political parties. And, and there is still a process to be gone through to, to bring uh, all of that through to the Assembly as relevant. Well, one of the main things that the agreement says about the Petition of Concern is that its use will be returned back to what was intended originally in the Belfast or Good Friday Agreement and the Northern Ireland Act 1998. So the agreement says that the petition will uh, only be used in exceptional circumstances and as a last resort. And then the agreement goes on to limit some of the uses of the Petition of Concern. So, for example, it says that the First Minister and Deputy First Minister will not sign a petition for the remainder of this mandate. It also says that the Speaker and three Deputy Speakers will not sign a petition uh, and that uh, latter point will be set in standing orders. And there are a number of other restrictions as well. So, for example, uh, members will no longer be able to use a petition in relation to uh, standards motions. Those are motions which uh, result from an investigation by the Commissioner for Standards. And also in relation to legislation, petitions will only be applicable after second stage. Uh, and that is uh, quite a significant change. Some of the changes to the Petition of Concern will require changes to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. And that will need to happen in Westminster. And then following that, um, there will be changes to the standing orders of the Assembly all of which uh, will have to be considered by the Assembly's Committee and Procedures and then agreed in plenary on a cross-community basis. So whilst the agreement changes the scope of the Petition of Concern quite significantly, um, uh, at this point uh, those changes still require uh, changes to the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and the Assembly Standing Orders before they can be implemented. That does nothing to prevent um, a, a general agreement from the parties not to use the uh, petition of concern other than in exceptional circumstances. Yeah, th th this concept of a 14-day period of consideration uh, is a new development as well. Um, and basically what that is doing is it's trying to provide a period for uh, reflection by MLAs and to take uh, consideration or to, to consider reports for example, potentially from the Human Rights Commission or other interested bodies in relation to that petition. But after the 14-day period has expired, the uh, matter will still be debated on and uh, voted on on a cross-community basis. So it is, a, it is just a 14-day holding period. So there are a number of changes outstanding from the Assembly and Executive Reform Assembly Opposition Act, uh, which have yet to be implemented. So that act said that standing orders would make provision for certain matters in relation to an opposition and other matters also. Um, but those standing orders have not yet been developed by the Committee on Procedures and have not yet been considered by the Assembly in plenary. So that's still an outstanding matter. And then in relation to new decade, new approach, there are a number of other considerations that it sets out in relation to an opposition. So for example, it says that funding for an opposition should be reviewed and it also says that the statement of entitlements for an official opposition that was set out in the Fresh Start Agreement should be reviewed as well. So again, that will be work for uh, at least the Committee on Procedures to look at. New Decade New Approach sets out a number of expectations in relation to rights, language and identity and uh, there are, uh, there's quite a large section in New Decade New Approach on that which places requirements on the executive and the assembly. In relation to the assembly, it says that members, or it says that anyone will be able to conduct um, business in the language of their choice um, and there will be a simultaneous translation system. Again, that requires changes to the assembly standing orders and that still is a matter for initially for the committee and procedures and then ultimately for the assembly to vote on um, on a cross-community basis to bring those standing orders through. Obviously a simultaneous translation system will require uh, consideration and investment by the assembly commission and the commission will commence uh, consideration of that in due course. 
The uh, New Decade New Approach talks briefly about three committees. So first of all, uh, there is the, an executive subcommittee on Brexit has been set up and the agreement states that there, there should be a committee to scrutinise the work of that subcommittee. That's the first one. The second committee is in relation to a programme for government uh, assembly committee to review some of the measures in the programme for government and to scrutinise the, the, the work of the executive. And then the third committee is an ad hoc committee to consider uh, the development of a Bill of Rights. Um, so again, um, the Assembly will consider the establishment of those committees pr starting in the next few weeks. New Decade New Approach changes quite significantly the process for appointing a First Minister and Deputy First Minister following an election and following a resignation. So the major impact is that it extends the period for appointment up to six weeks. If after six weeks a First Minister and Deputy First Minister have not been appointed, then a further uh, extension of 18 weeks kicks in. During that time, the Assembly will continue to meet and there is an expectation in New Decade New Approach that it will meet at least every six weeks. Ministers will still continue to operate, albeit on a caretaker basis, and Assembly committees will continue to meet. So after 24 weeks, if uh, the Executive has not been uh, appointed or elected, then the Secretary of State is under uh, an expectation that he or she will call an election uh, and uh, the nor normal process will kick in after that. Uh, at the moment, the Assembly is, is sitting one day a week and that is due primarily to the backlog of statutory rules which are currently being scrutinised by committees. And it's my understanding that that will continue for uh, the next week or so. So by the end of uh, February, the, the pressures on plenary time will be such that the Assembly will recommence sitting for two days a week. So for example, we have the Budget Bill coming towards the end of February and there will be a number of other pieces of legislation that have been signposted a new decade, new approach in relation to, for example, housing associations, which will need to come forward. But the major issue is that we have now resumed normal assembly business in the third year of a mandate. And typically in the fourth and fifth year of a mandate, that is the period when there is a peak of executive legislation. So we're probably facing a situation where we have five years of executive business squeezed into a much shorter time frame, which will place significant pressures on both the executive, on executive departments and on the assembly itself. Um, and we'll, we will continue to work closely with all of the stakeholders to try and manage that process through.